Good morning from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking live at the crawler transporter moving the space launch system into the vehicle assembly building on the home stretch of a 4.2 mile rollback from launch complex 39B, which began a little more than seven hours ago. On the upper right, you can see the crawler clock counting up. First motion uh, to depart pad 39B was at 11.20 p.m. Eastern Time or 3.20 a.m. UTC. This rollback operation uh, this morning is to move the space launch system into a safe haven inside the vehicle assembly building. It's heading for High Bay 3 to take a refuge or shelter from the threat from approaching Hurricane Ian, which is forecast to bring a possible tropical storm conditions to the Kennedy Space Center area later this week. Here you can see some of the uh, traffic uh, moving along the two-lane road next to the crawler way where the, this diesel-powered transporter is moving the moon rocket from pad 39B back to the vehicle assembly building at a top speed of about 0.8 miles per hour. And we expect if this journey continues at, at its present pace, uh, the vehicle could be inside the uh, hangar in the next few hours. It will make a stop outside of the vehicle assembly building in order to allow time for the crew access arm on the mobile launch tower. That's the umbilical structure that's uh, next to the rocket to move into position. It'll extend this arm into position next to the side hatch on the Orion spacecraft on top of the space launch system. So there will be a, a brief a stop before it rolls into the vehicle assembly building. You can see the crawler tread uh, moving along the crawler way. It's heading west now on the final straightaway that leads to the vehicle assembly building. NASA officials decided yesterday morning, Monday morning, to roll the space launch system moon rocket back to the VAB after taking several days to assess the evolution and changes of uh, forecast models for Hurricane Ian. NASA had hoped to launch this rocket actually as soon as today, as soon as this morning, from Pad 39B to begin the Artemis 1 mission. Artemis 1 is the first test flight of this giant new moon rocket. It stands 322 feet tall, or 98 meters in height. This is a new rocket that's been developed over the last decade in order to uh, send astronauts back into back to the moon for the first time since the 1970s. On top of the space launch system is the Orion spacecraft. This is a human rated capsule. On Artemis 1 it will not be carrying any astronauts but on future missions it will carry crews of up to four astronauts on the way to the moon and back to Earth. So with the decision to roll the rocket back to the vehicle assembly building, of course, the launch will not happen this week and is uh, possibly not going to be possible until mid-November. Mid Again, NASA had hoped to launch the mission as soon as today. They had a backup opportunity penciled in for October the 2nd. However, uh, the decision to return the rocket to the vehicle assembly building will preclude that. NASA has uh, launch periods for the Artemis 1 mission that stretch roughly two weeks on and two weeks off. So there are roughly two weeks of launch opportunities available just based on the position primarily of the moon's orbit around Earth. There are other considerations as well, but the primary driver is the moon's orbit around the Earth. And the current launch period closes October the 4th. The following launch period opens October the 17th and runs through uh, October the 31st. Unlikely that the Artemis 1 mission would be ready to launch before the, the end of that next window on October the 31st, but NASA has not officially uh, given up on that yet. And the following launch window opens on uh, November the 12th. So once inside the vehicle assembly building, NASA's ground team will secure the rocket 
for the stay inside the vehicle assembly building uh, during Hurricane Ian, which is forecast to pass over parts of central Florida and northern Florida after making landfall on the west coast of Florida. Uh, the forecast calls for the center of the storm to pass west of the Kennedy Space Center. And then once the storm passes and after uh, officials make any damage assessments, the plan is to uh, do some work on the rocket that inv will involve a servicing of the batteries, replacement of the batteries in the flight termination system on board the space launch system. That's the destruct mechanism that would be uh, triggered by the range safety officer uh, from the U.S. Space Force here at Cape Canaveral. If the rocket veered off course, those batteries uh, have been certified by the Space Force range safety team. Uh, there was a waiver and extension requested by NASA for the certification of those batteries that was granted by the Space Force to allow NASA to proceed with uh, launch attempts this week. But with the rocket going back to the vehicle assembly building, NASA plans to take the opportunity to replace those batteries. And that certification extension won't be a factor, uh, at least for the next series of launch attempts for Artemis 1. But it remains to be seen exactly when the rocket could be returned to the pad uh, following this rollback and following the storm and following the work that needs to be completed inside the vehicle assembly building. Currently the moon rocket is in the final half mile or so of the rollback, perhaps a little less than a half mile remaining before it reaches the doors of the vehicle assembly building. It's nearing our position here at the Kennedy Space Center press site and we're also seeing some of the first light uh, in the sky as we're a little more than a half hour from sunrise here on Florida's Space Coast. If you've been following our live stream, uh, a lot of this rollback has been occurring in darkness. There haven't been any uh, spotlights or any uh, significant lighting on the vehicle other than the uh, lights, light fixtures that are on the mobile launch platform itself throughout this rollback operation. But we expect to get better views now. We are getting better views now that it's neared our camera site and we expect even better views over the coming couple of hours as the sun rises here in Florida. You really get a good sense of the scale of the mobile launcher and the space launch system moon rocket here as you see some of the ground personnel walking alongside the crawler tracks and as you see these cars making their way uh, along that two-lane road which runs parallel to the crawlerway. This crawlerway is, uh, of course, dates back to the Apollo program. It's covered in uh, dredged river rock. And the entire stack that you're seeing, the crawler transporter, the mobile launch platform, and the rocket weighs more than 21 million pounds. It uh, really pulverizes that rock as it moves over the uh, crawlerway. Again, the top speed with the fully loaded crawler is 0.8 miles per hour.
If you're just joining us, you're looking at a live shot of NASA's space launch system, Moon Rocket, nearing the vehicle assembly building in the final stretch of this overnight rollback operation to return the rocket from the launch pad to the VAB to take shelter from Hurricane Ian. You're seeing some of the blue sky, some of the first light in the sky over Florida Space Coast now. The weather overnight has been favorable for this rollback operation. No weather issues, no uh, thunderstorms. There are some rain showers. Uh, the outer bands from Hurricane Ian are impacting South Florida right now. And uh, those uh, rain showers and the chance of rain here in Central Florida will pick up later today into tomorrow as the storm approaches the Florida Peninsula. The uh, crawler has uh, slowed somewhat. This is not totally unexpected. It does vary speed during the rollback and rollout operations. Again, the top speed is 0.8 miles per hour when it's fully loaded. Looks like it is a bit slower than that speed currently. It will be stopping outside the vehicle assembly building to allow the crew access arm to extend into place next to the uh, Orion spacecraft hatch. That uh, extension of the arm usually occurs with the rocket closer to the VAB than uh, it currently is located. Here's a nice wide shot showing the proximity of the space launch system and the open door to High Bay 3 there on the vehicle assembly building. If you haven't had a chance to do so, please hit the like button on our YouTube stream. That helps us bring this uh, coverage to a wider audience. So please hit the like button on our YouTube stream if you haven't done so already. That sky really getting a little bit brighter now as we're now inside of 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes until sunrise here at Kennedy Space Center.
Here you can see a good look at some of the umbilical swing arms on the uppermost portion of the mobile launch tower. And the uppermost arm visible here that's actually connected to the rocket at the current time is the uh, Orion service module umbilical. Below that is the uh, interim cryogenic propulsion stage umbilical. And then below that is a wind damper and an umbilical that's connected to the top of the core stage near the uh, inner stage area. The crew access arm is visible also near the top of the mobile launcher in this view. It's uh, folded up in a secured or stowed position. And we do anticipate seeing that arm swing into position next to the Orion spacecraft hatch, which if you look closely, you can see here with that circular window on the hatch uh, just below the needle-shaped launch abort system tower. And in order for that swing arm to move uh, next to the Orion spacecraft, the crawler transporter will have to stop uh, for what's likely to be a pause of about a half hour or so. That should be enough time to allow the crew access arm to swing into position. The crew access arm is unable to swing into position while the rocket is inside the high bay due to uh, clearance restrictions. There's just not enough space, just not enough uh, room with all the different uh, platforms and structures inside the vehicle assembly building to allow that arm to swing. So a NASA ground teams want to uh, move that arm while it's just outside the vehicle assembly building. We've seen this during each rollout and rollback.
If you're just joining us, you're continuing to watch a live view of the crawler transporter making its way toward the vehicle assembly building with the space launch system moon rocket on board. This rocket is being moved back to the relative safety of the high bay three of the vehicle assembly building to ride out Hurricane Ian, which is uh, threatening to bring uh, bad weather to the Space Coast later this week. As you can see, the crawler transporter and the SLS moon rocket uh, are nearing the open door to High Bay 3 there. In the foreground, uh, just to the lower right of the High Bay door is the Launch Control Center. That's where the firing room is located, where the NASA management team is overseeing the rollback operation this morning. Now, seven hours, 53 minutes since the first motion off the pad, which occurred at 11.20 p.m., 3.20 a.m. UTC. So this has been an overnight operation. It's a great shot. It uh, looks like a camera out uh, at or near Launch Complex 39B, which was the starting point for this morning's rollback. As you can see, the space launch system is nearing that open door to High Bay 3 of the VAB.
while we wait for the Space Launch System moon rocket to make its way into High Bay 3 of the Vehicle Assembly Building. Uh, we've mentioned that this rollback does preclude a launch of the Artemis 1 lunar test flight this week and during the current launch period, which is launch period number 26. That closes on October the 4th, a week from today. So the liftoff of Artemis 1 will not happen during this launch period as NASA had hoped. Looking ahead at the upcoming launch opportunities, uh, NASA has not set a new target launch date. Uh, they're likely going to wait till the vehicle is back inside the hangar and until some of the work is done to uh, prepare it for a new launch attempt and also perhaps until they have an idea of any damage or any uh, impacts that have been suffered from Hurricane Ian uh, before setting a new launch date. But looking ahead, these are the launch opportunities over the next couple of months. Uh, launch period number 27 opens on October the 17th and closes on October the 31st. And here are the dates and times for the, uh, this upcoming launch period. Again, the launch periods are primarily dictated by the position of the moon in its orbit around the Earth. So depending on where the moon is in its 28-day orbit, uh, really uh, dictates whether this mission can be completed because the Orion spacecraft has to launch on top of the SLS moon rocket all the way out to the moon and then enter a distant retrograde orbit around the moon and then return to Earth after a number of weeks. There are other considerations, though. Uh, you'll notice that there are some dates during this two-week period that are unavailable, such as the 24th, 25th, 26th of October. The other considerations that NASA uh, takes into account include whether the Orion spacecraft would be able to splash down in daylight at the end of its mission in the Pacific Ocean. And there is also a 90-minute eclipse constraint on the Orion solar rays, so the Orion solar rays can't spend more than 90 minutes in the shadow of the moon uh, during the flight of Artemis 1. That's a power generation concern for the Orion spacecraft. So here are the launch dates for launch period number 27, as well as the times and window durations. NASA has not officially ruled out getting the Artemis 1 moon rocket back to the pad in time to take a shot at launching to the moon toward the end of October. Uh, October the 17th is uh, almost certainly not possible. And it's unlikely, though, that uh, any of these dates are feasible. But again, NASA has not officially ruled out a launch opportunity uh, during launch period 27 and getting the Artemis 1 mission off the ground in October. More likely, however, is uh, NASA will select a launch date in November. Here are the launch uh, dates and times available for launch period number 28, opening on November the 12th. As you'll see, a lot of these launch times in November are at night. Uh, the daylight opportunities open up in uh, around November 22nd uh, for the remainder of the window or the remainder of this period. Of course, the uh, time of uh, daylight here in the northern hemisphere is uh, decreasing as we head into winter, fall and winter. So um, just there are fewer hours of daylight, so there is a higher likelihood of a nighttime launch going forward for the next few months. And again, the majority of these November launch dates come with a nighttime, middle of the night launch window. So here are the launch dates and times and window durations for launch period number 28, uh, which is the most likely time period that uh, NASA could target another attempt for the Artemis 1 mission. Here's another nice shot from Launch Complex 39B, looking roughly uh, toward the southwest, down toward the Vehicle Assembly Building. You can see the windows of the Launch Control Center to the left of the VAB and to the left of the Artemis 1 vehicle. And if you look closely, even from this uh, distance, three and a half miles away, you can see some of the very slow motion of the Space Launch System and the mobile launcher continuing to head into High Bay 3. We do expect this to come to a stop. We do expect this rollout to come to a stop for uh, maybe a half hour or so to allow time for the crew access arm to extend next to the Orion spacecraft.
Again, if you're just uh, joining us, please hit the like button on our stream. This helps us gain a bigger audience for our coverage. So please hit the like button here on our YouTube stream if you haven't already. We'll also take this opportunity to uh, invite you to become a member of our YouTube channel. We have exclusive video features available for our members, depending on which membership level you choose. So if you want to support our coverage and help us continue to bring you live video and uh, live coverage of launches, roll rollbacks, rollouts, and other news in the wider space industry, both here on YouTube and on spaceflightnow.com, please uh, consider contributing and becoming a member of our YouTube channel. You can also contribute in the Super Chat function here on YouTube as well. Here's a shot from our camera just outside our building at the Kennedy Space Center press site looking toward the VAB. Looks like the roll, the motion of the crawler transporter appears to have uh, slowed. Maybe it's come to a stop now. This may be where the uh, ground team here at Kennedy will take the opportunity to extend that crew access arm. So it does appear that uh, the team is preparing to extend the crew access arm. We're seeing the cover on the white room on the upper right of your screen here. That cover is now being opened by a member of the ground processing team here at Kennedy. And we expect that to be a, a precursor to the motion of this arm. It'll be extended about 180 degrees from its current position all the way out to uh, hook up to the side hatch on the Orion spacecraft. This will enable the team inside the VAB to actually access and get inside the Orion crew module if necessary to uh, do any work or service any of the payloads on board. Again, this mission Artemis 1, when it launches, will not carry a crew, but there are uh, there's a crew seat, crew seats on board the Orion crew module, as well as mannequins, one of which is wearing an Orion spacesuit, similar to the one that will be worn by the astronauts on future Artemis missions.
Again, with the Space Launch System Moon Rocket uh, having stopped just outside the Vehicle Assembly Building, we're now seeing the Crew Access Arm moving into place. Uh, it's been unlocked from its stowed or secure position against the Mobile Launcher Tower. And as you can see, the arm is in motion. It'll rotate about 180 degrees or so to get into position next to the side hatch on the Orion spacecraft. If you look closely at the Orion, you can see uh, the hatch, the outline, the square shape of the hatch, and the circular circular window there, uh, just to the just on the bot near the bottom below the launch abort system, which is the needle shaped uh, structure at the very top of the rocket. Below that is the Orion crew module and the hatch, the hatch window visible there. That's where the crew access arm is heading. This operation is always done just outside the vehicle assembly building during every rollout and rollback of the Artemis 1 vehicle. If you look closely, you can also see some of the spotters, at least one of the spotters there on the mobile launcher tower. It really gives you a sense of the scale of this structure. The rocket is 322 feet tall. The mobile launcher tower is taller than that, nearly 400 feet tall. At the end of this crew access arm is the white room, which is where NASA's closeout crew uh, on future crew missions would be uh, inside that room to help the astronauts crawl into their crawl into the Orion spacecraft and take their seats.
It looks as if the crew access arm has been extended next to the Orion spacecraft. There may be a little bit of final work to uh, make sure everything's properly aligned. We've seen some technicians walking each way, both ways on that uh, crew access arm between the white room and the mobile launcher tower. And during previous rollouts and rollbacks, we've seen a uh, technician in the white room through the uh, opening there on the opposite side from this view, sometimes working to uh, just make sure everything's properly aligned as that crew access arm is extended, acting as a spotter. Once the team confirms that uh, the crew access arm is definitely in place, we expect the rollout to roll back to resume. And we'll see that motion of the mobile launcher resume heading into the high bay three of the vehicle assembly building. Here you see the mobile launcher and the space launch system just outside the open door. That large vertical door, that column door, has been raised to allow the rocket to enter the high bay. Once the motion resumes, we'll likely see it enter the high bay within just a few minutes, less than a half hour really from the time the motion resumes until we see it disappear from view if everything goes according to plan. As you can see, it's an overcast morning here on Florida Space Coast, gray cloud deck overhead. No rain in the immediate vicinity of the spaceport right now, but the chance of rain showers from the outermost bands of Hurricane Ian uh, will increase later today and tonight into Wednesday. And the onset of any potential tropical storm-like conditions is not expected really until sometime later on Wednesday and into Thursday is when uh, the forecasters expect the worst conditions here in central Florida. Here's a view from a satellite, uh, one of the GOES weather satellites looking at Hurricane Ian as it crosses the western extent of Cuba and zooming in on the Florida Peninsula now you can see some of those outer bands making their way south to north along the Florida Peninsula.
We're continuing to wait for the resumption of motion by the crawler transporter. Uh, it's been stopped here at this location for more than 30 minutes now to allow the crew access arm to extend uh, next to the Orion spacecraft. That appears to be complete. And we're just waiting for the crawler transporter to resume its motion to finish uh, the trek back into high bay three of the vehicle assembly building. The rocket is just outside the door right now, just a couple hundred feet remaining before it enters that large vertical door of high bay three. Again, the crew access arm has been extended. We saw that swing into place nearly 30 minutes ago. And we're just awaiting for the resumption of motion by the crawler transporter to complete this morning's rollback into the vehicle assembly building. Again, to recap, the Space Launch System moon rocket is being rolled back to its hangar this morning to take shelter from Hurricane Ian a major hurricane that is currently crossing the western regions of Cuba and will soon head out over the Gulf of Mexico with the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center showing it approaching the west coast of Florida in the next couple of days and potentially bringing tropical storm-like conditions to Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station likely Wednesday into Thursday. NASA decided yesterday morning to proceed with the rollback to the vehicle assembly building. They waited several days to make that final determination in hopes that the forecast for Hurricane Ian would take it farther away from the Kennedy Space Center, but the track instead is taking it, predicting to take the hurricane over central Florida west of Kennedy Space Center. The current track does not take the core of the system over Cape Canaveral, although Cape Canaveral does remain at the edge of the cone of uncertainty, as it's called, from the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Nevertheless, it is likely that tropical storm conditions will be experienced at Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station later this week. So NASA officials opted to move the rocket back to the Vehicle Assembly Building for safekeeping during this hurricane event. This decision will preclude a launch for the Artemis I lunar test flight during the current launch period, which closes a week from today on October the 3rd. NASA had hoped to launch the mission as soon as today, uh, Tuesday, September the 27th. Today was one of the uh, options, one of the target launch dates for Artemis I up until uh, late last week when NASA officials decided to uh, not attempt launch today as they assessed the forecast for then tropical storm, now Hurricane Ian. And they held out hope for remaining on the pad, potentially launching in October, in early October potentially, before the uh, date of the closure of this launch period, which again is October the 4th. But with the rollback to the Vehicle Assembly Building, it's likely that the Artemis One launch will be delayed until November, although NASA has not officially precluded or ruled out the possibility of getting the vehicle back onto the pad for a launch attempt at the end of October. This view comes from the press site at Kennedy Space Center, looking across the road from our position toward the vehicle assembly building, you can see the space launch system, again, just a couple hundred feet from the door of High Bay 3. We're still awaiting the resumption of motion for the final stretch of this morning's rollback.
after stopping for nearly an hour to allow the crew access arm to swing into position next to the Orion spacecraft. We're now seeing the crawler transporter in motion again, heading into high bay three. We're about nine hours, 22 minutes since the rocket departed launch complex 39B and just a few hundred feet, just a couple hundred feet really to go until the rocket uh, recedes from view and disappears into high bay three. You see that open door to the left here in this view. On the right, you see the space launch system and the mobile launch tower. Again, that crew access arm has been extended, as you can see there. The crawler making its uh, final leg of its journey into the high bay three of the vehicle assembly building.
while we watch NASA's Artemis 1 moon rocket on the final portion of its journey back to the vehicle assembly building. We'll ask one more time, if you haven't had a chance, please hit the like button on our YouTube stream. It helps us gain a bigger audience for our coverage and more people watching as the Artemis 1 moon rocket rolls back to take refuge from Hurricane Ian. So please hit that like button on our YouTube stream if you haven't done so. If you're interested in supporting our coverage, uh, we have memberships available on our YouTube channel. If you want to join our YouTube channel, we have different uh, levels of membership for you to choose from. But depending on which level you select, you can gain access to exclusive bonus video features for members only. And you'll be helping us continue to bring you live coverage like this from Kennedy Space Center and coverage of the wider space industry on spaceflightnow.com. So we we'll hope you'll consider supporting us and helping us continue to bring you this live coverage. You can also contribute in the Super Chat here on YouTube. We would appreciate that as well. And we thank you again for joining us. And uh, if you haven't done so, also you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you can get uh, alerts when we're going live for rollouts, rollbacks, static fires, launches. You'll never miss anything. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, and you'll get notice of when these events are happening.
We're soon to see the Artemis 1 moon rocket to cross the threshold into high bay 3. And we'll lose our visual on the rocket when that happens. Uh, NASA is not providing us any live views for many cameras inside the VAB, so we won't see it, uh, won't see the rocket come to a stop. The crawler transporter team is just making sure everything is perfectly aligned as it heads into this tall vertical door leading into high bay three. And then once the rocket and the mobile launch platform are in the correct position, the jacking and leveling system on the crawler will actually lower the entire structure onto pedestals inside the high bay, much like the pedestals that we talked about last night at pad 39B that the rocket rests on. So we, we uh, saw that jacking and leveling system raise the mobile launcher off the pedestals at pad B last night just before the rollout began, and we'll see that system lower the mobile launch platform onto the posts inside the high bay to wrap up this morning's rollback. A nice tight shot here looking at the Orion spacecraft, the crew axis arm. At the very top of the vehicle is the launch abort system. That's the escape system that would power or propel the Orion spacecraft away from the space launch system in the event of a emergency or a rocket failure in flight. For Artemis 1, which is what this mission is uh, going to be launching on, this is an uncrewed demonstration flight. That launch abort system is not active for this mission. The launch abort motor itself is inert. But the uh, structure is there, and in fact, the what's called the jettison motor, which is going to be jettisoning the launch abort system a few minutes after launch. That portion of the launch abort system is active, but again, the abort triggers will not be set, and the abort motor itself is inert on Artemis 1. In this view, you can get an appreciation for the complexity of the mobile launch tower and the various umbilical connections between the mobile launcher and the space launch system. And if you look closely, you can see that the crawler and the rocket are moving in slow motion now, less than a mile per hour, heading into high bay three. Again, the NASA Artemis One moon rocket is taking shelter from Hurricane Ian. It's a Pleasant morning here in Ken at Kennedy Space Center this morning with calm winds. The sky is overcast with a few rain showers in the area. The chance of rain will be increasing throughout the day as Hurricane Ian nears Florida. But the worst of the storm is not expected to arrive here at Kennedy Space Center until late Wednesday into Thursday. Here's a wide shot from the Kennedy Space Center press site. You can see the overcast sky over the vehicle assembly building. The vehicle assembly building is 525 feet in height. It has four different high bays, only one of which is currently in use by an operational program by a, by a rocket, and that's high bay three, which is on the northeast quadrant of the vehicle assembly building, and that's where the Artemis One moon rocket is moving into right now. Kennedy Space Center is currently in what's known as Hercon 4, and that could move into Hercon 3, which is the next stage of readiness or preparations for an approaching hurricane or tropical weather system. So right now the, the teams at Kennedy Space Center are essentially getting ready to secure facilities. They're making sure everything is uh, ready, generators are ready in case of any power outage from the storm and if the readiness or the Hurricane level does move on to the next phase today uh, preparations will be made by the rideout crew which is the team of, uh, of essential personnel that will remain at Kennedy Space Center during the worst of Hurricane Ian which again is expected to um, bring tropical storm conditions to Kennedy Space Center over the next few days, 
There's a very small chance of hurricane-like conditions at Kennedy Space Center. But more likely it'll be tropical storm conditions as the center of the storm passes west of the spaceport over central Florida, at least according to the most recent track issued by the National Hurricane Center. We are now seeing the Artemis 1 moon rocket receding from view, passing through the door of High Bay 3. You can just see the NASA meatball logo, the European Space Agency insignia there on the aeroshell on the Orion service module, disappearing from view. As the rocket moves into High Bay 3, we won't get any views of it again until it rolls out uh, back to Pad 39B sometime in the coming weeks, hopefully to target a new launch opportunity for NASA's Artemis 1 test flight to the moon. This is the first or inaugural test flight of the Space Launch System moon rocket. This is the giant, more than 30-story tall vehicle that NASA has developed over the last decade at a cost of more than $20 billion now just for the rocket to date to carry astronauts back to the moon. On board is the Orion spacecraft, which is flying in an uncrewed configuration for Artemis 1. This will be the first Orion mission to lunar distances, the second Orion flight in space following a test flight back in 2014 in Earth orbit. And the Artemis 1 test flight is 
paving the way for Artemis II, which is the first crew mission on the SLS and Orion vehicles, uh, scheduled in roughly two years or so, and no earlier than sometime in 2024. That will carry a crew of four astronauts, three Americans, one Canadian, on a trip around the moon and back to Earth. And then later this decade, NASA plans to utilize commercial moon landers. Initially, uh, plans to use a derivative of SpaceX's Starship vehicle as a human-rated lunar lander to ferry astronauts to and from the lunar surface, while uh, SLS and Orion will be charged with transporting the crews from Earth to the moon and then back to Earth after the conclusion of the lunar landing mission. But before any of that can happen, Artemis 1 has to launch, and we saw a couple of launch attempts uh, a few weeks ago on August the 29th and September the 3rd. Both of those were scrubbed due to technical issues. One involved an issue uh, thermally conditioning one of the engines on the booster, on the uh, core stage, rather, of the space launch system. NASA engineers determined that was a sensor problem and not indicative of an actual problem cooling that engine. The other issue, more significantly, that scrubbed a launch attempt on September the 3rd was a hydrogen leak in the tail service mast umbilical that was discovered during fueling of the core stage with liquid hydrogen. Technicians uh, repaired that leak out at the pad. It replaced seal in that connection. And during a fueling test, a cryogenic fueling test last week, NASA's launch team succeeded in fully fueling the space launch system after initially encountering, encountering another leak in that connection, another hydrogen leak. But through some troubleshooting steps, they overcame that and got that leak down to a manageable, acceptable level, they said. And they were able to fully load the space launch system with more than 750,000 gallons of cryogenic propellants. And that gave the team some confidence to prepare for another launch attempt for Artemis 1 this week. The launch was initially going to be targeted for today, September the 27th. But then the tropics came alive and a uh, tropical storm, now Hurricane Ian, developed in the Caribbean Sea. And that put the Artemis 1 launch on hold again. And then after spending a few days monitoring the evolving forecast for Hurricane Ian, NASA man managers yesterday decided they needed to roll the vehicle back to the vehicle assembly building, move it off the pad where it was exposed, and move it to the relative safety of High Bay 3 for shelter until Hurricane Ian passes through Florida. NASA officials have said that if they did roll the vehicle back, as they have ended up doing, they would perform some battery charging on different systems on the Artemis 1 vehicle. While it's inside the vehicle assembly building, they will also replace batteries on the flight termination system, they said. So there will be some work done on the rocket and the spacecraft while it's inside the VAB. NASA officials plan to hold a media telecon this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC, to provide a status report on their plans moving forward for Artemis 1. So far, we haven't heard NASA officially rule out a, an opportunity to launch Artemis 1 by the end of October, by the end of the next launch period, but we understand that is not likely. We hope to uh, gain more information from NASA officials this afternoon. The next launch opportunity would be in mid-November.
We've now seen the Space Launch System Moon Rocket uh, move into High Bay 3. We're awaiting uh, final confirmation of the final conclusion of this rollback, which is when the jacking and leveling system on the crawler transporter lowers the mobile launch platform onto the pedestals inside the high bay. And at that point, the vehicle will be hard down in the VAB and the rollback will be declared complete. The crawler clock still counting up though right now, 10 hours, 10 minutes since the rollout began late last night at pad 39B. And we expect to see that clock uh, stop. It should stop when the vehicle is hard down inside the VAB. Kennedy Space Center uh, just this morning in the last few minutes has gone to Hurricane Condition 3. It's Hurricane 3. That's the next phase of hurricane preparations as Hurricane Ian continues to track in the general direction of Central Florida, a forecast to make landfall as potentially a major hurricane on the west coast of Florida and then cross the Florida Peninsula heading north or northeast. And that will bring likely uh, tropical storm conditions to the Florida Space Coast, including Kennedy Space Center. So in Hurricane 3, uh, this is the next phase of hurricane preparations. NASA officials have just transitioned from Hurricane 4 to Hurricane 3 here at Kennedy this morning. Hurricane 3 is the uh, condition uh, where forecasters predicting are predicting 50 knot sustained winds over the next in the next 48 hours and at this stage NASA officials will be securing facilities property and, and equipment as well as uh, preparing the so-called rideout team which is the team of essential personnel that will remain on base during the worst conditions of the hurricane so again yesterday we heard Kennedy Space Center went to uh, Hurricane Condition 4, Huracan 4. And today, this morning, NASA management has uh, moved on to Huracan 3. The next phase would be Huracan 2, which is uh, 24 hours prior to 50 knot sustained winds. And at that point, securing of facilities and equipment should be complete. Today's activity will be focused on that actual securing of uh, property and equipment and briefing the rideout team before they are deployed to their rideout facility here at Kennedy Space Center.
Good morning again from Kennedy Space Center. We're still awaiting confirmation of the uh, mobile launcher being hard down inside the high bay three of the vehicle assembly building. The firing room clock continues to uh, tick upwards. And we anticipate, according to NASA, the latest report from NASA is that the vehicle will be hard down in the next 30 minutes or so. That's when the jacking and leveling system will actually lower the mobile launcher and the Space Launch System stack, the rocket itself, onto pedestals inside High Bay 3. And at that point, the rollout will be officially complete. So NASA reports that hard down milestone should be happening in the next half hour or so, but is not yet complete. The rollout began nearly 10 and a half hours ago from Pad 39B to move the Artemis 1 moon rocket back to the Vehicle Assembly Building to take shelter from Hurricane Ian. The rocket is now inside High Bay 3, and again, we're just waiting for confirmation of hard down to complete this morning's rollback. And then the doors, the big vertical doors on the vehicle assembly building will be closed and the rocket secured to ride out Hurricane Ian, which is expected to bring at least tropical storm conditions to Kennedy Space Center later this week. Here's a shot of the empty Pad 39B. You can see the overcast clouds. Uh, these are associated, connected to clouds from uh, Hurricane Ian, which is currently over western Cuba, emerging into the Gulf of Mexico, and is forecast to strike the west coast of Florida in a couple of days. We're going to go ahead and uh, sign off now on our live commentary. Uh, we will update on social media later this morning, as well as in our blog on spaceflightnow.com uh, when we do receive confirmation that the Space Launch System and its mobile launcher platform are hard down inside the Vehicle Assembly Building. That will be the milestone when the rollout rollback is complete. So we'll update on social media and on spaceflightnow.com on our blog and our Mission Status Center later this morning when we receive that confirmation from NASA. Again, to recap, the Artemis 1 moon rocket is back inside the Vehicle Assembly Building after rollback from Pad 39B to take shelter from Hurricane Ian. This decision uh, is likely to delay the launch of Artemis 1, this moon lunar test flight, until November, although NASA hasn't ruled out possibly uh, trying to get the, ready, the rocket ready for a launch opportunity at the end of October. NASA officials are going to uh, hold a media telecon later this afternoon to discuss their plans and discuss the status of the Space Center as Hurricane Ian approaches, as well as the plans for Artemis 1 going forward. With that, we're going to again sign off our coverage. Thanks for joining us for the rollback of the Artemis 1 moon rocket. We'll be back for the rollout to the pad again, as well as the Artemis 1 launch attempt when it happens. Until next time, I'm Stephen Clark from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Thanks for joining us.